Mixed emotions from the weekend. Really impressive from Franco to get to both sprint qualifying three on the first time that he'd seen Austin, but also in the race to go from P15 up into P10 and score another point for the team. The mixed part though, is if we look at qualifying and more specifically where we're running that soft tire, we're struggling relative to competitors we're out of position, both cars out in Q1. And the same couldn't be said when we were running the hard, for example, in FP1 or the medium in sprint qualifying one and two. So we really do need to get on top of why we're not extracting everything out of the soft compound. If we go back to Singapore, I'd, I'd say it's a similar image where we didn't get everything out of qualifying and that's really what cemented the result. So good race car, but work that we need to be doing. Now, the good news is we have five races in front of us and I'd much rather have a fast race car and fix the other issues than the other way around. So there's plenty of opportunity to come. And in Mexico, it's a more traditional format providing more time for Franco and Alex. In terms of everything globally, the updates are working well. There's a little bit more added to the car this weekend, but we have to acknowledge that others also are moving forward. There was plenty of updates up and down the field, especially with Aston Martin, who we were still able to finish in front of in the race. V-Carb, you saw we were really racing with, and Haas, who did a brilliant job, and they're really the benchmark for that midfield gaggle at the moment, but we're but there or thereabouts, we've just got to get it all together. Another aspect of Austin is this year we had half a million people there. The, the race was buzzing. It was a brilliant atmosphere and environment. And it really just goes to show you how we are growing and how we are a global sports organization now, really with coverage across the world in the USA. Just the growth year on year is impressive. Welcome to the Val's Verdict presented by Kraken. So a question around why we're struggling and is it Austin specific? I think the race pace would have shown you that we're there or thereabouts in terms of the car working, but we're not able to get it all right on one lap in a qualifying condition. So nothing really to do with the circuit. And even if it was, it's our responsibility and duty to make sure we have a car that's working everywhere and that we can set up everywhere. This very specifically was down to not extracting performance or grip from that soft tire. Probably as extreme as the medium was actually for us faster than the soft in a qualifying condition. It shouldn't be. It should be a large grip step, which is what most other teams had from experience. But the base package, the package that allowed us to score a point is still very much there or thereabouts. If we qualified in position, I'm sure we would have the opportunity to score more again. At the beginning of the race, it's always a difficult moment, but in this particular circumstance, Valtteri effectively pushed into the back of Alex and broke the diffuser, but that also pushed Alex forward on into Esteban, which then broke the front wing. So effectively, Alex was bridging between the two cars. The damage on the front wing, as you saw during that safety car period, we, we changed it, we stopped and uh, made sure we fitted a fresh front wing to the car. So that can remove that damage, but actually the diffuser damage was far more significant and had two effects. One, just a loss of downforce that was fairly significant, but two, the balancing effect of that was very hard and we couldn't get the front wing to where we needed it to be to, to really give them the best car possible. And for want of a better word now, when you're losing a few tenths from damage in a midfield that's that close, you're really out of the fight. The answer is this, that the motivation of the team isn't around one race weekend. Of course, we will really celebrate the moment and the point for Franco, we'll celebrate the 10 points in Baku, we'll celebrate. But that's not what the team's about. The team is about this long journey that we're all on together and there's some really positive things coming in 26, 27 and 28 that people can now sort of feel, touch and, and understand what's changing. And so motivation therefore isn't up or down depending on a weekend with a DNF or an accident or lots of points but rather it's stabilized with more part of an organization that's moving forward and up the field. And my words used to be what was required to believe that, but now you can see results. You can see across the last few years, we're just slowly moving forward in terms of performance and the, the gap to the front is closing down. So we're on a good journey and that will continue on into 25, but the big steps come 26, 27, 28. With Franco, there's obviously a lot of knowledge that he just doesn't have. He hasn't had that many races in the car. 
But where he can contribute, and he is contributing, is clearly he's taking the performance of the car to the limit of what it can achieve. So we are able to get balance feedbacks, understanding of where the tires are operating, understanding where the degradation is coming from, where do we need to move the balance across the weekend? How can we help him and Alex extract more performance? And his debriefs are very similar to Alex. It's also worth sharing that Alex is spending a lot of time with Franco to make sure we're sharing information across the size of the garage that brings the team forward, not just one driver. And it's great to see that atmosphere. In terms of where Franco can help, the more and more he gains experience, the more and more he understands how to use the differential and the other braking tools that we have on the car, how we develop the car, how we set the car up, that will then feed his knowledge base where he's then able to drive the direction of where we're going. So race by race, we're already seeing that change now. The fan zone, which to explain for those that perhaps aren't aware, we, we do around about 10 events a year at different tracks around the world, where inside the town, normally, um, we will create our own store, our own Williams fan zone. And there you can see the car, you can see the simulators, I'll come along, Franco, Alex will be there as well. In the case of Austin, Jamie and Jensen Button also joined us there. And we'll interact and spend time with the fans, but you can ask questions and we'll, in the time available to us, is answer as many possible and sign as much as you possibly have. The reason for doing it is to really give back to the fan base. And what I would say is the change has been enormous over the last 24 months and really over the last few years. I was once told that everyone's second favorite team is, is Williams fundamentally. In other words, you pick your favorite, but Williams is always there or thereabouts. I think now we also have a fan base that perhaps were fans previously or their new joiners. But what I can tell you is we have hundreds of thousands of individual pride, really with pride wearing Williams merchandise and supporting either Franco or Alex uh, or Carlos in the future. And it's a fantastic feeling because at the end of the day, the reason why we're doing this is we're sport and we're doing it because we have fans that push us along the way. At the hardest moments, you know, fans scream at the top of their lungs, just really supporting you and bringing you on. And it's a brilliant journey. So answering your question, it was incredible in the fan zone. Just thousands of thousands of fans absolutely screaming their lungs out. The same at the track for what it's worth. And after the race, on the, uh, for those that don't see it, have a look at social media, you'll see it, but thousands of Argentinian fans basically swarmed in front of the Williams garage and uh, Franco went out to say hello. So uh, that's the environment we're in and it's such a pleasure to be a part of.